let's crack open a beer and share some thoughts. <laughs> Breadiness that you said yeah. continues through into the taste, doesn't it? It definitely comes out in the flavour, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, and we're serving that really cold. That is cold. I'm struggling to find the crispness. The crispness isn't quite there at the moment, it's almost too soft. Yeah, it's a very soft, smooth, really easy drinking lager. It is a very easy drinking lager. I mean, 4.8%, so it's not, I mean, that's a sessionable lager as well. Easily, yeah. So that's not too bad, is it? Oh, it's, it's up there with. It's alongside the ABVs of the the, the sort of macro yes. stuff, isn't it? Firmly planted themselves so, in the sub four, five yeah. percent. You're, you're not going to look at it and go, "Oh, that's too strong." Yeah. I'm not, not having that. Yeah. No, it's a but definitely that bready bit is coming through for me. Yeah. So this is um Saint Austell Corriv Cornish Lager, which we've just been discovering is a traditional Cornish word meaning beer. Yeah. Um, and this week we're going to be featuring uh, a number of St. Austell beers because they've kindly sent us a few beers to try on the show. Which is very good of them. We, we, we always love to try beers yes. for people and, and then share our thoughts. Especially they've been sent to us. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we're starting off with Corev and we're going to work our way through a few beers tonight. So, um, But we're going to start off with something a little bit different this yeah. week. Um, so we were challenged by uh, At Tasting Niche. Um, you can also find her on YouTube at Tasting Niche. Um, she's been doing a, a series of things called Frequently Asked Beer Questions, where she put a challenge out to the uh, to the beer vlogging community to, to answer nine questions. Um, and then that got extended to the podcasting community uh, as well. So uh, this is our take on, on those questions. Okay. So um, we're not going to spend too much time on this. Let's try and rattle through these in <laughs> quick, <laughs> sharp... We're, yeah, we're, we're both we, looking. Knowing we, always, that, yeah. we always do that, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. We know it's probably going to take so us. We're, we're already lying to our <laughs> listeners. About an hour before we actually get through <laughs> get, these. Get the news. Um, so, question one How did you get into beer geeking and why beer? Okay. Well, well, man, you can go first on that one. Geek by nature, as anyone who's listened to the season Which two we finale established that, yeah. will already know that one. Um, and it just so happens I love beer. So, it probably could have been anything but I did with the blogging or podcasting but beer is just something which is just something you can share really easily I think absolutely and there's multiple ways of sharing it as well yes yeah. there is multiple yeah. ways of sharing it and there's so many beers out there yeah you're never going to drink them all no you can give it a damn good go but you're never <laughs> going to do them all what about you um mine was um I think in terms of like the podcast and, and where I am now Mine was the chance meeting with, with, with Mark in the queue for the Foo Fighters gig um, that, that we ended up chatting and became friends and then had a, a mutual appreciation for beer and then literally one day he said, let's do a podcast. And I was like, I have no idea what that means, but let's do it. <laughs> and, and then I'm, I'm here. But yeah, much the same as you. If it, wasn't, if it wasn't beer, I would be geeking out about something else yeah. because I'm, I, I've got that geek it's that geeking thing Nature. which we spoke about isn't it and yeah quite a, as we found out quite a few of the listeners have it as well yeah absolutely I, I think if you're a geek about one thing you're going to have other levels of geekdom yeah it's like peeling an onion definitely there's always going to be another it goes level. on yes and it goes on, on. And on. Um, so, so question two then what's your favourite beer well I decided to use the ubiquitous untapped to see which beer I checked in the most I already had a good idea. Is it Ghost Ship? It is Ghost Ship. <laughs> Ghost Ship is my favourite beer. I went just purely on the fact that I've checked it in. It's, it's it by far and away the most checked. So you went purely on a numbers thing from Untapped? Yes. That's, that's interesting. Uh, because Ghost Ship, I think, is a beer that probably hasn't changed that much either. It's probably stayed very true to its original self. So. I, don't, I don't think it's... My, my own personal feeling, if it has, it's been really small incremental changes. There's been no leaps in it. Yeah. And I mean, occasionally it tastes amazing. Yeah. I think it's always good. And sometimes it does taste amazing. I mean, those check-ins on Untapped are definitely helped by the fact that the Intercity train has it as a train beer. <laughs> Do they still have it? Or it's changed, has I it? I think it, you can still find it, but it's not the one they push as much. Right, it's, the, okay. uh, it's a different brewery who yeah. have, have their one being pushed a bit more, but it's not a patch on Ghost Ship. No. So yeah, I went with numbers, but that was 
I was going in that direction. It was going to be ghost ship or landlord. Uh, that I, I probably would have erred towards landlord until you said when I checked my untapped and I was like, it's ghost ship. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely ghost ship. And what would your one? Well, see, if I was to go by your rationale, it, it would be cannonball. But pe- people know the personal struggles that you're, I've been having. You're having a few moments with them, aren't you? Uh, with, with that particular beer at the moment. So I think it, if I'm going to go on consistency and a beer that I'll go back to and drink time and time again, and I would go to above any other beer, without a doubt, it's going to be Axe Edge from, from Buxton. I would have said Axe Edge before. Only if it had been two months ago, three months ago, probably would have said Cannonball. Uh, but knowing your feelings about the current iteration of Cannonball, then Axe Edge was going to be the one I would have chosen yeah. for you. A- absolutely. We could do like the Mr. and Mrs. competition. We, we could. We'd, we'd now <laughs> it, wouldn't we? Mr. and Mrs. B. Here they are. Um, so, okay, and, and this ties into question three, which is if you, if you can only have one beer forever, what would it be? So, it, would it be the same beer? Same beer for me. And for me. I couldn't okay. see. I couldn't see the point of choosing a different beer. No, why? Why would you? If it's my favourite beer, I can always find a reason to drink an IPA. <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, so, question four: How much? How can you drink so much? And do you stay healthy? How do you drink so much? Well, I suppose that, I mean that's hard to quantify. Drink so much, but my 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 way of doing it is um, I try to have one to two dry days per week. That generally fits in with. I don't, it's, it's whatever's planned and then I slot in dry days. Mm. Um, but I do exercise a lot. I mean, running's my sport. I run to race when I'm not injured, go to the gym, bit of swimming, bit of cycling. And I try and usually fail to limit my dead calories to my beer habit because they are dead calories. Yeah. If we're talking about health wise, there's no point denying it. Um, but I do try to make my other calorie intake better. But Generally, then when I had the beer, I failed on that bit as well. Yeah. But I try to find a bit of balance. Okay. So balance is key. Balance is key yeah, for me. Really, yeah. Get, get there sometimes, sometimes I don't. What about, what about yourself? Uh, yeah, interesting. I'm, I, I wouldn't say I'm the healthiest person in, in the world. Uh, I, I, I keep threatening to try and start running again, and I, I keep starting and stopping and starting and stopping. There's, there's something that's just stopping me from getting over it becoming a habit. Um, I could probably do more in, in terms of the health side of things, but I do I do try and walk a lot uh, as well. So I will try and, you, you know, get out and get about and just get a bit of fresh air and walk around. Um, and probably much the same as you, will we'll try my hardest to have a couple of days a week where I'm not drinking. Yeah. Um, because you you know you just you just can't drink every day. No, I think it's yeah. quite nice to slot. And also, I do notice if I slot in a couple of dry days, and if they happen to go together, so you say you have two days consecutive, I do find. But then that first beer after you've had a couple of dry days, it tastes so much better. Tastes brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it almost doesn't matter what the beer is. Absolutely, I can't disagree there. And in terms of how I can drink so much, it's sometimes, especially if you're at a festival, it's about the tactics you use. Yes. So I, I know last year um, there was an occasion where I was at the Leeds Beer Festival where I was on a mission to try and catch up with you on on our oh, check-ins, check-ins because we were trying to bring our two thousand five hundred badge in. So I had to do. I worked out that I needed to do fifteen beers in a session, and I literally went into that session and for every third of a beer I had, I was matching it with a third of water. Very and sensible. And, and I managed. Why well, don't I do that all the time? I don't know, Steve. Why don't you do that <laughs> all the time? I don't know why I do that all the time. Don't do that all the time. But it works well, doesn't it? It does work well. So just just, just be sensible about it. Drink in moderation sometimes. Is that, um, is that a hard public health warning? Maybe, which probably is ties that, into question five, the, which the, is... the uh, first time in five years. <laughs> are you an alcoholic? No. No, me either. I, it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting one because for me, alcoholism is about having a dependency. On, on needing to, to drink alcohol to get through the day. And, and I don't have that. Same as any other addiction. I like a beer. Yeah. I enjoy a beer, but I don't need a beer every day. Yeah, it's the same as any other addiction. If you need to satisfy your addiction rather than want to do something, whether that be a bet, a smoke, drugs, alcohol, then that becomes a different kettle of fish. Yeah. Uh, for me, as far as I'm concerned, it still sits on the one side. Yeah, absolutely. Um, question six what's your favourite ingredient some hops some hops some hops uh, a few more hops 
And then I decided to actually name a couple of hops. Okay. Citra and Mosaic. I am um, nothing to add there. <laughs> I really don't. I, I like my favourite ingredient in beer is hops, <laughs> and I love Citra and Mosaic. They are the two hops that work perfectly in beer. Yeah. So uh, let's move on. Uh, another quick one coming up, I reckon. Question seven: Do you brew? <laughs> oh no way. No, me either. Why not? I don't. I don't think I've got the patience. I tried one of those homebrew kits once. Yeah. Uh, Woodford's Wherry. It tastes like dishwater. It wasn't actually that bad, but you end up with like 20 bottles of the stuff. Or you can't make a small amount of it when you do it from a kit. Yeah, yeah. It's like, and then they say, well, it's, uh, you can have, you, you're, it comes to equivalent one pound a pint. Yeah, but I don't want 20 pints of Wherry. I've never wanted 20 pints of Wherry in my life. Yeah, yeah. I like it in the pub now and again, but I didn't want to, you know, but it's the patience thing as well. And there's so many other people doing it. I mean, even just that R6 bottle share. If everyone, if everyone who's part of the box share turns up, we've got three or four home brewers. Yeah, I ain't going to add anything to that. No, I think I'm, I'm very much coming from the same place. I don't have the patience for it, and I would literally, if my first beer didn't end up tasting amazing, I would throw the whole lot out. <laughs> Everything would go out. I, I just wouldn't try and work out where it had gone wrong. I would just be like, oh well, this is shit. I'm not doing <laughs> this anymore. I'm done. Um, so, so yeah, I mean that's an interesting one for for me, and I still think there's a little bit of um, it's a little bit of magic in there still, yeah. isn't there? Well, yeah. I would still love to be, I would still love to um, do what you and Mark did, which is get involved with making a beer where you've had input into the recipe. I would love to do that, but with someone else who knows how the magic works. I, th I think we can still make that happen. We, we've got a first birthday coming up. In so September. that that would be that would be the big thing for me. I, I, I reckon there's involved. a brewer out there that will let this lo let let us loose on their kit <laughs> at a distance, at a, distance. <laughs> at, at a very long distance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, question eight: What was your first beer? Now this was the first question that gave me a bit of a. Oh, I'm not really sure what the question is. Um, my first beer, the first beer I remember drinking in the wild, by the wild I mean going to the pub with my mates. Um, so not having a, a beer at home or something like that. Um, was a beer called Hansa Lager, which many people probably don't know. I put in brackets here, I assume it was produced under contract by Tolly Cobbled, who were an Ipswich brewer, used to sponsor and own Ipswich Town Football Club. Um, and they used to have all the pubs in Ipswich. And that was the beer, it was like under a pound for a pint of lager. Uh, or you could go to about a pound and five p and have the export version mm -hmm. if you were on a mission that night. Um, but I've also thrown in my first cask beer that really grabbed me, and that was Tetley's on cask. I used to love drinking that as part of the pub quiz You've thing. mentioned that a few times yeah. before. As, as Tetley's, being a real... would, Tetley's would be right up there now with the landlords and ghost shit for me yeah. if I could still have Tetley's on cask rather than smooth flow. Smooth flow Tetley's, yeah. Interesting. So that's what I've gone for. I haven't mentioned, I haven't gone for a craft beer because that was so far down the track. Uh, is is there a craft, do you have a, could you name your first craft beer? Jaipal. Definitely. Yeah. Jaipal. I think a lot of people would be nodding. Yeah. Right, right now uh, at home. Definitely Jaipal. Yeah. Um, easy one for me. My first beer and I can vividly recommend it. I'm, I'm from that genre of Foster's was massive. So I my, my first beer was was probably a four pack of Fosters in in the park with my friends. No, it's not something I'm proud of, <laughs> but it just happened in the park with your friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, in in terms of my first craft beer, um, I'm I'm still going back to that moment where um, I was drinking a beer and I was trying to search what it was, and it helped me discover Untapped, and it was from Sainsbury's, and it was there. Scottish craft lager. Oh, the Harvestone. Which, which is Sh uh, apparently, for all intents and purposes, Harvestone Shalia. Yeah. Which, um, w which is my first craft beer that, that that I had that I can remember having. Uh, at I the would time. still, I would, I would quite happily have that if I went to pub. I would see that one. I, I would definitely. And and I and I very closely ran by a beer that I I recently. Uh, it was in the last week somebody posted a picture of it and I was like oh my god that was such an important beer in my journey was the Williams Brothers um, Augustus. Augustus Caesar yeah it's the Lager IP okay, hybrid, hybrid. we had that at the first beer festival that Clayton and I held at work so we had the two beer tastings by Jeff Evans and then we thought okay there's enough interest here we're just going to pick beers we want to get yeah. and, um, I'm sure they used, they used to sell it in Sainsbury's didn't they yeah 
and we just because again the words that but I still get it in Sainsbury's and I'm in before we finish this season we're going to do uh, a gateway beer show where our criteria is simply to go out and find the beers that were your gateways so spoiler Williams Brothers Caesar Augustus <laughs> is probably going to be on that show for spoiler me. Jaipur y- yeah so y- you know that I think that'd be quite fun though to revisit those beers that were there at the beginning of our journey yeah yeah, if anyone can find Tetley's on cars for me. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, okay. Foster's in the park. That's we easy. can probably we'll, we'll, recreate we'll call, that. We can yeah. record that yeah. in the park. Um, last question then, question nine. Who in the beer world do you look up to? Okay, well this goes back to one of the earlier questions which said, do you brew no? Um, so for me, it's absolutely anyone who can brew beer. Because as far as I'm concerned... And uh, to quote Freddie Mercury, it's a kind of magic. Um, and also, now that I've been doing the podcasting for coming up for a year and a few months and blogging for a couple of years, anyone else who puts themselves out there as well, other podcasters and bloggers, I, I love reading other people's experiences and other people's thoughts about beer. Really enjoy listening to other people's thoughts about beer. And especially, you know, our good friends, Wayne and Janice, who've decided to, to come back to us. Yes. After after Wayne being being, being yeah. nerd yeah. for for a few months, um, so you know I hope he gets some success after all his uh, exam and studying, and also another shout out again to the uh, sip and forecast with uh, our you know number one fan Jordy Miles and his mate Rob. Really enjoyed the two shows they've put out. So really enjoy listening to other people. So I can't name other people on there, but definitely if you brew beer, you write about beer, you talk about beer. I'm looking up to you. Yep. It's interesting you didn't name any particular person there um, because I, I went down the opposite route of actually trying to work out actual individuals that have had a real impact on, on my journey through beer. And I've got, I've, I've got four people and I'm, and I'm going to name check them here as well. So firstly, uh, Richard Taylor, who, who for me is the godfather of beer podcasting in, in the UK. So you've, you've mentioned him before and it's a name unfamiliar to me. Um, so he's at the beer cast on, on Twitter. Um, he blogs, does a lot of stuff that's uh, Scotland focused, works for the Scottish Brewery um, now, but is still able to retain a level of independence, but was the first UK beer podcaster um, to put out regular content. Um, and it's actually his 10th anniversary this year as well. He stopped beer podcasting about five years ago but it's the 10th anniversary of when he first started. Um, but when he started, nobody else was podcasting. So, so for me, it's if it wasn't for him, there's always that person, the, 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 that trailblazer. Oh, there always has to be a first. Y- yeah, he, he, was, he was the first. So he's, he's up there for me. Um, in terms of brewing, um, Andy Parker, for, for me. Um, Who's Andy Parker? Never heard of him. <laughs> he's got a lot of love on last week's show. <laughs> uh, getting a lot of love again tonight. He's the nicest man on Twitter. Um, but in terms of kind of following your dream and, y- you know, actually doing what you want to do oh, in life. Oh, big time. And Andy has been absolutely, you know, he's, he's, he's gone from home brewer to running his own brewery. Expanding. That expanding. That he's loved by everybody. Um, so I do look up to Andy because I think making that sort of step and being brave enough to take that step as well yep. is, is a massive thing. And, and and while we're talking about taking that step, somebody that I absolutely, you know, am in awe of in, in terms of doing that is Matt Curtis uh, as well. Because Matt went from being uh, a, a blogger to, to essentially leaving his job to do blogging full time. I think he's just got first first year anniversary recently, wasn't uh, it? Or? Yeah, yeah. So he's a, over a year into doing it yeah. now. No, I completely agree with you for that. In terms of chasing your dreams and, and doing what you enjoy, you, you know, big up to Matt for, for, for doing that. And and then the final person that I just want to mention, and it's... Oh, it's, it's not me, is it? Oh, you spoiled it now, haven't you? <laughs> no, it's not you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> is uh, a person for who, had I not met him... In, in a bar and had he not been brutally honest with with, with me oh, I know back in say. the early <laughs> days of, of when we first started doing the podcast I, I'm not sure we'd be where we are now because I, I, I met this guy and if, if he's listening now he's gonna he's gonna tap in straight away he said to me can you just stop listing ingredients when you talk about beer and can you tell me what you're actually tasting and that was Justin Mason 
at the first time I met Justin, we were in the Craft Beer Co. We had a few beers at lunchtime. It was a, a match made in heaven, uh, one might say. But yeah, he, he he literally said, all you do on the podcast is you say, I can taste hops, I can taste malt. He was like, yeah, but what are the flavours that you had tasted? And I come away from that. And that was so important to me in terms of actually taking a beer and what am I tasting in here? What am I getting from Yeah, r- rather than just going past the stuff you can read on the side of the label. Yeah. Because those were the days when people just listed Listed the four main ingredients. Yeah, they yeah. weren't actually listing your descriptive yeasts, hops, malts, and stuff. Yeah. Um, what he, but what he basically did to you then was he he challenged you. Absolutely, yeah. He changed the way that I viewed beer. Yeah. So right, I know the tops in there. I know there's malt in there. I know there's yeast in there. Yeah. There's more. So will you stop telling me that those four things are in there? He basically challenged you to say what else. Yeah. What else is in there? Mm. And yeah, brutally honest, I can I can I can relate to that with Justin. Yeah, so for for me it was it was probably th- those four people that I look up to or I have looked up to at, at times during my journey. They're, they're very good shout outs. Yeah, so that was a uh, that's our frequently asked beer questions. Now, I enjoyed that. I did enjoy putting the answers together. I yeah, I like those. So some of them were a bit of a challenge. Yeah. yeah. So thanks, to, thanks, Tasty Niche for that. I um, enjoyed that. Now part of this challenge is we're now supposed to nominate people to also complete the yep. challenge. So. Um, and from our point of view, we'll be nominating other podcasters. Yeah. So Wayne and Janice have already done this on on, on their most recent yeah. show. Yeah. So we, oh, I would, they would definitely have been high up on the list of people to yeah. nominate. So, so who are we going to shout out for this? I am going to go back to one of the podcasters I've just name checked, and that's uh, our our friends up north, the Sipping Forecast, because I quite like the interaction between Miles as a sort of Yoda of beer, yeah, and Rob as his Padawan. I think to hear their contrast of answers to these questions would be quite good fun. So, Miles and Rob, off you go. I, I would love to hear that. You know what I'd also love to hear? Is Ross and Tom arguing their way through these nine... What, you mean where one of them says, you're talking a load of shit? Yes. So, so my nomination is going to be being on okay. for, for this. So, hopefully... In fact, being Omicron, they could do it when they have their two boxes in McKellar. Yes, because this is that that's one to look forward to, isn't so it? So they can Plus. do the two box in the and tell each other they're talking shit at the same yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Job done. There we go. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, anyway, while we've been talking about that, we've uh, both finished the Corev. We, we have drained the Corev. Yeah, so what did you think? What's your final thoughts on that one? Really drinkable. You, you, can, you can picture yourself sitting on a sun, sunny day in Cornwall, um, overlooking the beach, overlooking the surf, and just having a pint of that. Uh, I, I think I would. I would lo- love to take because uh, I've never had this before. Um, I, I would love to see what it's like on, on keg. The breadiness was maybe a little bit too much for me at times. I think it gave way towards the end once you got used to it a little bit. For, for, for me, and... yeah, it was still hanging. I think maybe just once it got in my head, that breadiness, like yeah. you know, like when you have the really twiggy beers and the real caramel, that kind of thing. It's it was hard to shift. You probably imagine a bit more fizz on. Yes, okay. and I think that would lift it as well. Yeah, and you would again hot day, pint of that, overlooking the Cornish beach. It's that environment thing again, isn't it? it? Work. You're, you're in Cornwall, drinking a Cornish beer on a Cornish beach, watching the surf. Yeah, I think it'd work brilliantly. Job, job done. Um, okay, so while you're lining up our next beer. Um, let's get into what we've been up to in, in this last week, so our beer adventures. Well, uh, well, last week, well, I've, I've only had one excursion really, and that was last Wednesday when uh, your good self, uh, myself. Can, can I just say, by the way, I do love the way that at no point have you offered me the bottle opener, because we're recording at yours tonight and there, there's a history of me spilling here. Yeah, I as, I'm as, not letting as, you do any of it. As well, so and you're, so you're so keeping far, everything well away from me. And so far, nothing's been spilled. No, it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sorry, sorry, good so, point. Yeah. So you were saying about yeah, last, so, uh, Wednesday. last week, you, me, and uh, we met up with the guys Rhythm from Rhythm and Brews, a relatively new podcaster, podcasters, um, where they match beer and music, and uh, they try to you know say does it enhance, does it change your perception of the drinks, and uh, we, we're doing a show with them. We are, yes. Um, next fact, week it will be the next show. Part you one hear. will be next week. Yeah, yeah. there'll be the next show you hear from us. So. Um, we thought a good idea. What's the what's the best way of doing this? Let's go out and have a beer together. Good idea. We had many beers <laughs> together. 
all seem to only be of the pint variety as well. We did only have pints. Yes. Apparently every beer only came in pints last only Wednesday. Only came in pints, yes. Um, and we started off in the Exmouth Arms, which is a new, a new pub for me. Um, about five minutes walk from Farrington Station. It's one of those pubs set in like a, like a little market Hang street. On. Five minutes? I think it's only five minutes. Ten minutes. All right, I was on a Boris bike though, so I wasn't really... Well, you weren't walking then, were you? <laughs> <laughs> so it was a ten minute walk okay. from Farrington okay. Station. Up the hill. It's not a massive hill, come on. It's an incline. <laughs> and um, it's, uh, it's one of these very old-fashioned pubs, you know, green tiling on the outside, lovely feel inside, decent selection of beers on. And um, I had the Temperance from One Mile End, which is a 3.5% English Pale Ale, um, which I have to admit, I wasn't that fussed about the first time I had it, going back on my untapped check-ins. <laughs> and um, I've had it a few times since, and it seems to have got better every time. How many pints fit did you have? I had three pints that night. <laughs> it only came in pints. Yes, only came in pints. But so that, was I mean, that that's, drinkable, that's a good well. indicator. Yeah. And I thought we were being quite sensible doing that. But it was a, we had a really good chat with the guys, and um, both, I feel I can speak for Steve as well. We're both very excited about this show coming up with them. Really good interaction with them. They know they really do know their stuff about their music yes. as well. Yeah, Lewis away really, some of that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that that was a really good night. And um, as part of the same night, we went to the Craft Beer Company. <laughs> which which was only a couple of minute walk yeah. away. Um, we stopped on route somewhere as well. We went to the Gun Makers Arms, yes, didn't we? Because we did, yeah. you said, oh, I've heard about this. I've never been never there. Never been in there. Let's I said, let's go. Yeah. Uh, uh, but again, we were quite sensible in there. Had Hophead. Yeah, but they only sold pints. They only sell pints as well. These places need to get some new glasses. Yes. Um, Craft Beer Co., um, I did have a pint of something else before I hit then this beer, which was the Colonel India Pale Ale. Is it Equinot? Is Equinot. 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 Equinot Vic Secret. Bloody fantastic. Yeah. Um, so drinkable. I think it's about six, five, six, 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 six seven. seven. Um, beautiful, beautiful keg India Pale Ale. Yeah. Uh, Brilliant. I think you had a couple of more pints of it than I did because I didn't. You didn't have anything else. You just went straight for it, didn't you? I, I had many pints of it to the point where the following morning, I, I, you had to remind me how we actually got home because <laughs> I don't remember leaving the pub. And that you bought me the other beer the night that I enjoyed, which was a can of Stone IPA yeah. on the train from uh, from M S. That that Colonel beer was just stunning. Yeah, it was just off the charts. So drinkable, uh, so crisp. Just what for me? What IPA should taste yeah, like? Yeah, if you had a like a box of five five boxes on it, which you had to tick, it ticked everyone. Ticked all of them. Yeah, brilliant. It was brilliant beer. Yeah. And then my last uh, beery adventure was um you know again as part some of the beers that Saint also sent us very you know thanks again. Uh, there was the uh, proper black from them. Yes, yeah. Which is a a, a black IPA, um, which I shared with Michelle. And we both loved it. In fact, I've actually written down one of the key words in the show, smashable. Absolutely smashable. Yeah, because it hasn't got that overly roasted. It's got a nice balance yeah. between the hops and those, you know, slightly darker touches to it. And it is very easy to drink it's, that. It's almost like becoming our catchphrase. It is almost becoming isn't, our catchphrase. Isn't it? So uh, do we need to check out how often we can use the Hulk gif? Uh, maybe, or, or or maybe I need to find a little background noise of glass smashing <laughs> every time we say we have that going on in, in in the background. Um, yeah, I mean that was a great night. Wednesday night was amazing, uh, and it was great to meet up with Luke and Andrew. And I'm really looking forward to to next week's show, where it is going to be a two part show again. So uh, we'll be doing our half of the show first, where we're just going to do what we normally do. Uh, and then we're going to do what they normally do, which is to pair beers and music, which yeah. is, is, is looking like it's quite exciting. And also thanks to those guys for um, changing our minds slightly on how we're going to approach our upcoming opinions on films. Which we're recording in the next few days. Yeah, because um, we were just going to drink the eight beers in the, in the it, order that it, made sense to drink the beers. Yeah. Uh, not anymore. We're, no. We've now paired the beers to certain Since, scenes within the film. In fact, the, the only beer which has stayed in the same order was probably the, the last beer anyway. I, I think so, because you honestly can't put that beer anywhere else. No, because it'll ruin the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. So, so that beer was always going to be last. But yeah, so, you know, Steve took time out of his busy schedule to start the pairing process. We've gone through it, and 
I'm liking it. There'll be, I think there's a couple of ones which will be quite well telegraphed as well. Yeah, easily, easily. So, um, so yeah. Um, in addition to that, I also had a cheeky uh, extended lunchtime session in Leeds. I noticed. Um, where I happened across the remnants of a Galway Bay takeover in Friends of Ham. Um, well, that was a shame, wasn't it? It was a shame. I, and there I was sat at 10 past 12 drinking a third of 200 Thavams, which is a 10% impy barrel aged stout. Followed that up with a Foam and Fury, which is their double IPA at about 8-ish percent. Oh, I had that for the first, the bottle. Yeah, which you, yeah, you which did, I, didn't you? Yeah, but you got me from yeah. Beer Central. Loved it. Incredible beer. It's brilliant. That but is from, fantastic. For me, a couple of times this week, I've said to, because I've, I've been chatting to Wayne about it as well, easily for me, probably one of my top five IPAs. It's right up there. You, right up there. In, in terms of how good it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I just uh, had a little wander around Leeds and had a few beers. On, you looked like you had a nice time. I had a lovely how, time. How was the journey home? I slept. Good man, that's yeah. two hours of sleep. Two hours of sleep to, <laughs> to sleep them off. And then got back to London, so you know when you wake up and you're like, thirsty now. <laughs> So yeah, that was uh, that 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 was the week's beer adventures wrapped up. So let's um let's uh, we've got to move another yep, beer got, before we move on to yep, the news. So while Steve was uh, running through his beer adventures, I've opened up the uh, Baobab. I think that's how you say it, or Baobab. Baobab. Bab. Yeah. Um, it's a uh, it's a wheat beer brewed with Baobab, which I presume is one of the ingredients. Then inspired by the Eden Project. Which is the uh, whole like greenhouse eco isn't it? thing down down that part yeah. of the world, isn't it? Uh, it's a five point three percent wheat beer. So uh, let's see what this is like. Okay, cheers, cheers. Well, it's definitely got a wheaty nose. It's got that like sort of slightly banana, fruity aroma, hasn't it? Mm. Yeah, there's, there's definitely wheat on the nose. Oh, but it's got like that, that bit of bubble gum flavour on it as well a little bit spicy There's, for me that's a little bit spicy on the face. oh really yeah, not, what, at the back of the throat or not, when I say spicy not like I, I suppose not like uh, hot spicy like rye spicy that, that sort of earthy spiciness that, that you get from it I mean um, I know that uh, one of our good friends has done a review of some of their beers recently uh, Matt Chinnery half pint gentleman um, I don't remember reading this bit, but perhaps I just missed or forgotten about it. But apparently, this has got more magnesium than bananas and more vitamins than oranges. So apparently, this is a health drink. Perfect. Which goes back to our frequently asked beer questions. I'm just going to drink this all I'm the time. I'm being healthy. I'm going to drink this yeah. all the time to stay I'm, healthy. I'm being healthy. Um, it's, it's 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 got a lovely fruity flavour actually. My youngest brother Brian would love this beer. Problem is, I can't. The the aroma's not welcoming to me, and I can't get past the aroma. You can't get because you're but you you this is comes into your uncomfortable uncomfortable yeah. area of beers, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So it's there with your farmhouse saisons, your two funky Belgian yeah. Belgian beers, and your wheat beers. Yeah, but let's that let's, spicy beers. That, yeah, it's almost like you remember that Irish beer we had, that white pepper. Yes, yeah. It's that white a, pepper. A not, it's, like, not the, yeah. it's not chili pepper. It's more like the white pepper. Yeah. Um, but who wants to hear me drink an, an IPA every week? Apart from you. No one. I'd happily sit here and drink <laughs> But it's, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, my, my youngest brother would love that. Cause it's, it's a very so I think it's a quite soft wheat beer, but it's definitely got all the characteristics. Maybe it's like a entry-level gateway wheat beer. Yeah, 5.3%. So it's, it, we've, we've gone up a half a percent. Like the tie-in as well. Uh, you, you can see, you can probably see that in the gift shop at... The Eden Project people yeah. will be buying it because it's a novelty, almost like a novelty product. It's got a very extravagant label, yeah. unlike the Corev, which is very basic, very Cornish clean flag. cut. Yeah, yeah. So it goes with the lager, very clean. There's a lot going on on the on the label for the second yeah. one. Um, right, let's 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 crack news. into the news, and it's been a it's been a fairly light news week this week. So what's this, the, what's the Scottish brewery news? Th there is no Scottish brewery right. news. Move this, on from this, the news this week, so we can move on. Um, five points have announced they have brewed a beer specifically. Uh, they're, they're brewed a collaboration with Poppy's Fish and Chips Shop, uh, specifically to be paired with Fish and Chips. Un un unsurprisingly yeah so Poppy's is a fish and chip shop over near Spiltfields Market uh, so borderline going towards the east end not far from Brick Lane 
So, and I can recommend the chips if anyone's going past. The chips are fantastic. I've tested them recently. There, there you go. Just for the show. There's there's an endorsement right right there. So it's a it's a pale ale that's been brewed and developed over many months at five points, uh, along with um, some help from the Spear Sommeliers at Boutique Bar Brands, uh, using 100% British malt and hops grown in Kent. Um, the key points of the beer are dryness to um, give it a nice bit of finish to cut the way through the fats in the dish. Citrus, the lemony character, obviously lending itself to the fish, and then a biscuit malty character. Um, I believe that's being released on the 2nd of June. Not sure how widely available it will be. Though. Okay, so, so yeah, I think that's half term week, isn't it, yes, for us? Um, yeah. I mean, uh, it's interesting that one because I, I have never, I don't think I've ever really had a beer with fish and chips. I always have a mug of tea. I would always go, if I was going to go for a beer with fish and chips, I'd probably go for lager. I can see that. But yeah, or me, IPA. It, I'm, because I, I'll drink IPA with anything. Well, you would. We've mentioned that, I think. Uh, right? Again, um, yes. Who knew? <laughs> who knew? <laughs> Nobody knew. Um, next up, uh, Purity Brew Co. Um, have set a UK first by being the first uh, brewing company to achieve cask mark in a stadium. So this is at the Rico Arena, where their beers are served in a number of the concourse bars and um, other bars within the arena. They've, they've achieved the cast mark, which is no mean feat. It's no mean feat, a... because a lot of us, you know, will have been to sports venues. Yeah. And they're not dissimilar to going to concert venues. No, they're terrible for beer. Terrible for beer. Yeah. Um, and this is this is taken at, 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 I'm assuming this is because it's part of the actual arena. So when you're watching the sport, buying the beer, it's a half time, it's a football match, or it's a rugby match, you can drink it during the game. Um, so I assume this ex it doesn't include places like Leighton Orient where they have a dedicated football supporters club. No, this, club. Is, this is actually as part within the arena. Yeah. So to get there is pretty good. I mean, as yeah. far as I'm aware, Colchester do Carlsberg and they do Green King on Smooth Flow when I've been there and I've just gone, I'll have a hot chocolate, please. <laughs> but can I get nitro <laughs> Yeah. Can I have nitro hot chocolate? So I think that's really good because that's, if that's in all the bars, that's quite a lot of work. Yeah. And, and a UK first as well. Yeah. So well done. I mean, it's that's that's a good news story related to the Rico Arena after is, they, the decline of Coventry over like, recent years. Like, like you say, they just need the sport to go with it now. Yeah. I mean, not just Coventry, but also uh, now the home of the Wasps rugby, which I didn't know as well. Who play their Premiership rugby at the Rico Arena? Uh, and then finally, in the news this week, uh, just a follow up on last week's story about uh, Beer Nouveau releasing their crowd investment program. Uh, more details uh, have emerged this week in terms of the, the the numbers of each version and the costs attached to it. Um, those are still coming out as we record the show, so there'll be a there'll be a link in the show notes, yeah. the full prospectus that will give you a breakdown of how much it's going to cost you to invest in. Yeah, it's definitely in, worth a look. Beer Nouveau. If anyone anyone who's tried the beers that Steve's done, I, I still wanted to try that special brew he did. With beer and Omicron. Yeah, I'm going to admit that, to be honest. I would have loved to have done a can of special brew. Yeah. And that. That would have been brilliant. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, so, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's like I say, a really that's, light news That week. is light news, isn't it? Pro probably makes up for the, uh, the, the fact that we're already... Don't tell people. Don't tell them how far we're... A long way into the Don't show. And we've not even started opinions yet. So, um, is, that what is that what we're here for? That, yes. Uh, apparently, that's what we are going to do next. So now it's time for a bit of this. Opinions, 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 opinions. Okay, so we asked this week, and this was a record-breaking poll this week, so stop all the press, because we have more votes than we've ever had before. I'm not sure how we'll top this. I, I don't even know where to start with this one this week, because this is like a record-breaking poll. I, I, I thought this would get a lot of votes, but nowhere Unprecedented. near. Unprecedented. So come on, give us the number. What was the final result? Okay, so the final results, we had 669 votes for this. Which is how much further... Part, this isn't just breaking our record. No, this is... This is... This is for, for, like, stat nerds, this, this is your moment. So this is... This is 250 more votes than our previous most popular ever poll. And 250 is also the number of total votes that we got for last week's show. Yeah. So, quite how this happened, I don't know. But the question that we asked was, is London still at the forefront of the UK beer scene? 
which, which probably explains why, why, why we've got <laughs> so many people involved. Uh, offering people a yes, no, or was it ever choice. 49% of people went for no, which is almost half of those 669 votes went for no. Uh, 35% of people went for was it ever, and 16% went for yes, which is quite a low number. Well, yeah, because basically no and was it ever are effectively the same. Ish. In my mind. Okay. Um, and it was interesting because those two were changing yeah. uh, over the course but, of... But yes was never close. Yeah. Um, so I think rather than just jump in with our views yeah. on, on this, we've, we've got a lot of really we good have, comments we have, this we week. Have, we have got quite a few comments So I'm thinking we go through the comments and we'll interject with our views as we go through yep. the, the, the comments. So first up, Neil Fletcher at Anelios31, Beavertown, Colonel, etc. excited me from the start of my journey. Now that's possibly something, and bearing in mind how excited we got about that pint of kernel yeah. last week, um, that's probably something that I can very much relate to in the early days of my beer journey, was drinking a lot of very, very good beers that were on this brown paper label with this dodgy black print Yeah, that you could only ever drink once. Yes, only that beer in its iteration existed once. Yeah. No, um, I'd agree with them. I'd agree with them. I mean, I really don't know how Colonel ever got into my consciousness because they they don't really exist on social media. At all, no. Which And that became almost a sub-thread yeah, of through, this whole... Which I think we can come back into. But for now, I, I don't really know how Colonel entered my consciousness with the craft beer thing, but bearing in mind I've mentioned already my craft beer epiphany was Jaipur. Colonel didn't take that long to appear after that, but I don't know how. All of a sudden they were just there. They yeah. were just there in all the bars that I was going to. There was this, there, 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 there were these beers from the Colonel. And I, I don't remember ever having a bad one. That, and that's the thing, and that's the thing that will always stick in my mind. I don't remember ordering a beer from the Colonel Brewery that I've ever gone, well, oh, that's average, isn't it? Every beer I've always been, that's that's really good. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, and also, when they did use to have the tap room open to drink on site, that was always a pleasure. And you couldn't get in there, but you couldn't get in there, and that's what that's no, why no, they, no, that's, no, that's no. why all you have to do was do what me and Clayton did: is turn up as the shutters come up at nine fifteen in the morning. So that's planning. Yes, that's, that's absolutely. Basically, the kernel was breakfast. It it was, but th you, you know what? Let's let's just dive yeah. straight into that now because we're talking about the kernel, and, and, and I said it was obviously a it became its own thread in itself. This poll went almost 18 hours without a single person commenting on the Colonel. There, there, there yeah, were people comment, commenting about London and Beaver Town and this place yeah. and this place. And, and the Colonel place. didn't get a shout. And there wasn't a single point where, where, where the Colonel came up. And obviously we, we tend not to comment on the polls either during the process. I, I try to actively not comment. Yeah, I mean, I think I commented on uh, when uh, uh, our good friend Sean said, all the good beers up north, and I went, is that why you're pissing off up north then? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I didn't really comment on the actual beers itself. So yeah, so when, when did the Colonel first appear in our poll? Um, that, that would be as a result of Mr Curtis, who, who decided to jump in and completely steal our thunder for, for this evening. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, and, and it was, uh, um, he, he jumped in to say, interesting reading the comments to see no mention of the Colonel, so important of where UK beer is now. And that in itself fostered a whole load of responses, um, just to that that one Which comment. Which I believe is ongoing in some shape or form. As we even recall as now, there are still people talking about Matt's, Matt, Matt's comments. Yeah. Because in addition to that, Matt did reply with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a thread of eight tweets about just how great London was. Yeah. Um, covering a, a lot of the breweries and, and a lot of the scene. Um, and, 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 you know, and that in itself... Uh, again, created a whole sub-thread. Yeah, of, I mean, of, of I, I think, discussion. The, you know, we, we do need to go back to the to the other comments and stuff, but yeah, the sub-thread which was under it was like people like the Colonel and stuff. Because like I said, I don't really, I can't recall a time where I see anything about them. The only time I see anything about them is other people having it. Yeah, 
I don't see the colonel doing they're, it. They're not active on social media. No. And part of one of the threads was saying, well, actually, that's, they're missing out because they're not active on social media. I think, I think the point that Matt made was, yeah, but they still sell out of everything when they open up on a Saturday morning. Same reason why they stopped having the tap room yeah. open for people to come in. It's yeah, so, got too busy. So actually, that's, that's an example of a brewery that actually doesn't need social media yeah. to, to sell their beers. But interesting. It, it, very interesting sub though. But I think we can come back to, the, the, to some of the, the London bits anyway. Yeah. What, what other comments? I, I just, I just, I just yeah. want to finish off with, with this one comment that I think was brilliant from, from Matt, which, which sums up this entire thread for, for me, was slap it in a pastel green 440 mil can and it's a millennials Instagram dream <laughs> just going to leave that one there for a minute <laughs> I hadn't seen that very good um, so let's we'll go back to some of the other comments uh, so, so Joe Hill at Multiplex ran and this was a number of tweets so, so, so excuse me for this one uh, great beer in London but lack of a focus scene it's also scattered arguably Bakewell and Ellen have been more important than London to the UK craft movement Think about the Brewers 2 at Cloudwater, Magic Rock, Northern Monk, Marble, Buxton, Burning Sky, Lost and Grouded, Verdant, Tempest. No brewer quite makes that list. That's a big statement. That is right a big there, statement. I mean, I, sp I suppose the first half of that statement, uh, the lack of a focused beer scene, sort of ties into what um, one of the messages that Clayton put on there, Clayfish. Uh, which was about maybe we should have spit out the bit about London, as London yeah. having different pockets, south of London, north of London, you know, West London, all developing their own very distinctive beer scenes as well. Um, but, I mean, we can't, we can't help how big London is. No, but we've said that in the past, haven't we? That it's very, very difficult to you know, it's do to, London justice. It's harder to do a pub crawl. So if we go to the Crimbo crawl in Leeds, the Crimbo crawl in Newcastle, to replicate those crimbo crawls in London, I think is a lot harder if you wanted to take in the top five places in London. It's a bit like trying to do the Monopoly pub crawl. Yeah. The Monopoly pub crawl, if you try to do it per the board, is impossible in the day, I think, if, especially if you want to use public transport. If you do it by the fastest route by public transport, you can just about know you've got 26 pubs with 26 streets, but even then you've really got to be on it the whole yeah. day. Whereas, Everywhere, a lot of other places are much more condensed. You know, London is a big scattered. I mean, it's greater London, not because we're saying we're great, but because it's just the, the sheer size of it. It so, goes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but the actual, the second comment, the second half of that, um, no London brewer quite makes the list of the Cloud Waters, Magic Rock, Marble, Bucks and Burning Sky. I think that's, I think that's a, that, that is a big comment. Well, that, that was, that was the first comment last night when I was like, Colonel, you, you, arguably, if if you were going to list the top five influential craft brewers, I would say Colonel. You, you'd put Evan on that list, yeah. wouldn't you? He he would be on that list in terms I, of one of the early innovators. Yeah, just because he was early doesn't mean he stopped. No, and and clearly clearly he hasn't. Um, but again, just just lending itself to what you were saying there in terms of the size and the scale of things. Uh, so, so Michael McCall at Lebowski 49 is there anywhere else where you get so much choice of breweries pubs bars bottle shops I feel like I find a brilliant pub every week you see that was in contrast to someone else's comment I read on the thing that when they come down to London um, Mark Johnson yes he said that he always looks out for new places to drink and new beers from new breweries but he's often left underwhelmed I thought that was a really interesting comment, actually. Um, is that is is that that is he saying there's a lot of mediocre stuff out there, or is there nothing that's just like really stand out? So I would argue that there is definitely some there is definitely standout beers in London, but if you've got, I mean, the late on the craft beer London website, there's 69 breweries listed. That doesn't list, I think, all of the traditional brewers. I don't think meantime. I'm not even sure if meantime are on there. Um, Follows weren't on there. So I think the latest number is what, 80, 90, maybe even 100 if you're talking about the M25 as a catchment yeah. area. There are going to be some ordinary beers. The way I look at it for London is that maybe it, the market is a little bit, it's going through a period of maturity for London. Um, the craft beer scene definitely for me, although Thornbridge Jaipur was the epiphany, I was already aware of Meantime. 
but they didn't quite hit me the same way that Jaipur did. But London beer scene, once I started to discover it, I was finding beers all the time and places to drink all the time, and still am. I mean, I'm a London Londoner by birth, I work in London, and I still love finding new places serving good beer. But are they serving good London beer? Yeah. We don't, I don't think in the London pub we get that many... I don't see Cloudwater, Magic Rock, Marble, Buxton that often in the, in the London pubs anyway. So they're still sourcing local? Yeah. And there's so much to choose from, isn't there? Yes. That's, that's the thing. Like, like you say, you know, you, you've got a, probably a choice of 100 breweries that, that are all vying for tap space. You're never going to be short of choice, are you? No. That's so yeah, it, it, but it's, it's a, that, I mean, that's, again, that's, that's a nice counterpoint, that one. It, it is, and it's, it, it's interesting because, and, and again, it will lend itself to some of the other comments that have been made here. So, the Owl Lady at the Owl Lady never thought of London as being a trailblazer. A caterer for the masses, yes, but more buyer than an innovator. Is, is that something you would a, a, agree with? You... No, I think, you know, again, well, you I, may sound a bit boring, a bit repetitive, you know, we're stuck on the same needle on the record player, but Colonel and Evan, I would definitely say innovating. The fact that they don't just perfect a beer and then go, right, we're going to do this every time. They perfect a beer and go, okay, well, what have we got, what have we got available for the next one? Yeah. What do we want to do with it? But it's, it's some of that, for, for me, I, I can go back if, you know, go, I can go back to the beginning of, of, of my craft journey or dive down the rabbit hole, whatever you want to call it. London, it was all about London back then. And it, it, was, it was all about Beaver Town and it was all about Colonel. That, that, those were the two names that were constantly time and time again. And, yeah. then, and then you got your likes of your four pews and your brew by numbers and your weird beards. Um, and Camden, even Camden at that point. Well, again, that comes, was, back, that was comes back to craft Matt, brewery. That comes back to Matt's point. And yeah, Camden, their ethos has changed. Yeah. Potentially, or at least they're definitely, definitely bigger. They're building a massive facility, and they've reopened their tap, their revamped tap room as yeah. well underneath the arches at Kentish Town Station. Um, yeah, I mean, you, I don't want to feel like I'm having to defend London because I don't think there's a position to defend. But the beer, the beers elsewhere are fantastic as well. I mean, you're you're forever going up to Leeds and having yeah. great beers, and some of your favourite beers are definitely from north of London. A absolutely. Um, but it's it's interesting because I would say if I'm in Leeds, I'm not necessarily drinking Leeds beers. I'm maybe drinking beers that are from the region of, or maybe from the neighbouring region. But it just happens to be a good beer destination. Yeah, but you've also got, you have got beers from Leeds and Yorkshire. Yeah. To hit up, haven't you? Yeah. But then you could like in Yorkshire to London. London is just... Is a county size, isn't it? If not yeah. bigger. Well, that's that, that's a great comment there because um, and, and, and James at Gammon Baron said, I'd be interested to know what the perception is outside of the UK bubble. Obviously, anything brewed in God's own country, <laughs> <laughs> own county tastes better. So, so we know James is from Yorkshire, and we, <laughs> and we know what he's saying there. But you, you know, and, and you look at the poll results and, and comments that people have made in years. A lot of people saying Manchester and Leeds. Again, a lot of people saying Newcastle as well. In, in terms of th these are the new beery hotspots in the UK. What I would definitely say is Leeds or Leeds and Yorkshire, um, Derbyshire, Sheffield, Newcastle, they definitely get their message out there about their beers and their beery destinations. Yeah. I would say that we're in the south it's probably a bit more understated. There's not as much, whether again, because there's so many different places to go to potentially and different people talking about different places. You don't have a concentration of, of comments Yeah, I can, I can about one place. So we you don't have that concentration of comments about maybe just one or two tap rooms because so many of the breweries in London have got tap rooms attached to them. Every one that opens now is opening a tap room. Um, so perhaps there's a part of that as well whereby We've almost got too many things to go to, too many beers being brewed by too many different breweries, I don't mean too many, by such a large number, that maybe it's hard to have noise about any particular one. 
I'd say for London, probably the noisiest is Beaver Town. Mm. I mean, as Matt said, they're holding their extravaganza in September for 3,000 people. Beaver Town are probably the, the noisiest and the shoutiest in London. But is, is, is that thing, and again, it comes back to that, that, that comment that Clayton made in terms of, is it, is it too big to be a single hotspot? And actually, is it now a series of smaller hotspots that we shouldn't, shouldn't no longer consider as London, but actually it's sub-regions of that area? I think potentially because there's, you know, the South, especially the South London, North London bit where, you know, North London's definitely started to create a bit of their beer mile for one of the There's a real buzz around North London. You know, and, and yeah, this the, year there's the definitely... Affinity and 40 Foot and, yeah, and Beaver one mile, Town are in, within that as yeah, well. One yeah. Mile End, uh, yeah. Redemption. So there's yeah, a lot of noise there, yeah, coming yeah. in from them. But again, it still doesn't feel the same sort of pitch as we get for other places. Whether that's down to people not getting their message out or because there's so much choice. I, I, I still think of it as the, the London market is quite is a bit more mature perhaps and I don't mean that as in uh, they've gone from being a annoying teenager <laughs> into young adulthood yeah. I mean it's just maybe the craft beer scene has been here for a bit a little bit longer and also because of the just the sheer nature of London as a cosmopolitan city and a metropolis but it's sort of developed in a different way you know I think there are some fantastic beers but you don't you li you you've recently listed on uh, on the flavour of the month new releases, and none of those came from London. No, and and let's. But there must be new releases. Yeah, try, trying to I suppose trying to wrap this up a little bit. There's there's three more comments that I want to cover, and, and the first one will tie into that as well. So uh, again, at Clayfish, to be honest, there's no buzz about London beers at the moment. It's all cloudy northern muck these days with a bit of Bristol thrown in. Is, is, that, is that down to social media? And, and is it that London beers just aren't shouting about what they do anymore? I think that sort of echoes what I've been saying in a very much roundabout way rather than nailing it in 140 characters as Clayton just did. Absolutely. And, and that's a skill. To, that is to a skill. It in he has nailed it. Although so, I, just for the sake, I haven't said the word Northern Muck, that was Clayton. Um, so Julie O'Grady at Julie underscore O'Grady they have had their fair share of great breweries but lots more in the north brewing quality beers now time to hand over the gauntlet um, again I don't think it's whether it's time to hand over the gauntlet or whether just naturally people are gravitating towards is the scene gravitating more towards the trends that are being produced elsewhere well, I think that's uh, one of Miles' comments, wasn't it? He said that social media and improved distribution mean geography is less of an issue. So population mass doesn't necessarily attract breweries. A brewery can be based anywhere these days and still key into that national distribution network. So yeah, perhaps, you know, going back to what Judy said, I mean, there is a, not necessarily handing over a mantle, but especially in this modern age that we live in, we're always after the next best thing. Yeah. Or the next big thing. It's the same with TV programs, with films. We're very much technology immediacy, anything, yeah, aren't we? Yeah. What's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? Um, and that, that, that I would say that, that why, why would the beer world be any different? Um, True. So you know, I think that, I think it's I think it's a good point from Julie, and I think that you know Miles' point is well made as well. That you can be, I mean, look at the amount of uh, social media exposure Lost and Rounded have had. I still haven't actually Before tried. they even produced their first yeah. beer. And I still haven't actually tried one of the beers yeah. yet. So, so let's let's just we'll finish this up one off with I think a comment that probably sums it all up. So this is Carl Gunner, so Carl's your friend yeah. at KL Gunner. Surely it doesn't matter what city or region is at the forefront, what matters is this country is making some great beers. I was massively impressed with uh, my Padawan's comment. <laughs> I thought it was a great comment. I, I just thought he summed it up perfectly. Um before we uh, drink some more beer, final our final thoughts on 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 London. Uh, do, do you have anything to add? I mean, I, to I find it. I, I I will be honest here. I find it hard to take criticism of London, being a born and bred, and working in London. Um, but I do recognise that, and this taps into Carl's comments. There are fantastic beers being made all over the country now. London is not the centre of the beer universe by any stretch of the imagination. It probably never will be um, because 
there are so many skilled brewers out there and so many people getting the word out about their beers that I'm more than happy that there's other places to go and drink good beer, get good beer from. In fact, what I actually need is some of the places that Joe, some of the breweries that Joe Hill mentioned to get more of their beers down to London for me to have on a regular basis. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I think, and that's that's a great point. I mean, I'm I'm quite fortunate that I I do travel around a bit, so I get to try some great beers. That being said, as was the case last Wednesday, if I walk into a bar and I see a Colonel IPA on tap, I'm not going to walk past it. We didn't hesitate. I, I was straight in. I was like, oh, I have a pint of the Colonel yeah. IPA because it's you know you're going to get a great beer. Yeah. Um. Well. That was fun. That was fun. And like I said, I was, re- the, you know, uh, comments were fantastic. Really enjoyed reading all of those. Um, but the number of votes. I know. Just 669. If, if we can get that every week, can you imagine how long we can make these shows? Yeah, people would love it. In fact, people would stop voting now. Of course they would. Of course <laughs> they would. So, so while we're going through that, we finished the, the Bauer. Uh, yeah. What did you think? Um, it got easier to drink it, after the initial... It, it, it grew on you, didn't it? Yeah. Because I finished mine before you did, and then I looked up and you thought, oh, he's finished. It softened. Yeah. It, it softened in the glass. As it warmed up a little bit. Yeah. And yeah, th- thoroughly enjoyable. But it's just, it's never going to be your... It's not my style, thing. Is it's, it? it's not something I'd go for. But in in terms of, like, like I say, as a as a, it's quite a soft entry. I don't I don't like to use the word because it's not. But as a as a tourist product that you imagine will be in the Eden Project gift shop, you'd, you'd buy a bottle of that. Yeah. To, to take away because it's it's been brewed locally and it's been brewed specifically for for yeah, that. Yeah, and it's something shop. it's something a bit different that's been yeah, brewed. Ab- absolutely. Because often um, it's very, very traditional regional brewers doing a beer for these gift yeah. shops. So from traditional regional brewer doing something for their local gift yeah. shop, we're, we're now moving on to St. Austell doing something probably for a the mass little, market. A little bit different though, isn't it? I mean, yes. We're, and, you know, just to make clear, we've tried this before. We have. We had it uh, kegged. We had it kegged in Dublin at the All Tech Festival. So um, let's say cheers first cheers. of all. Cheers, mate. Uh, we've got the Eureka Single Hop American Pale Ale. It's got a nice nose on it. And we were we were big fans of this at the time. They they were the first ones we went to on the Saturday, weren't they? They were. We went and had a chat. I mean, we were initially they give surprised. They gave us woolly hats. We were surprised to see them. We were surprised so, to see them. I think that's why we wandered over and said, what are you doing here? <laughs> at an Irish beer festival, yeah. they were a standout English brewery. Yeah, and they were saying part of their thing was they were trying to get the message across that you know they do more than just the traditional beers we associate them with. And they had, they had a range of a few keg beers, didn't they? Proper job on keg. That was lovely. Which just lifted it. Yeah, you enjoyed um, it more on keg. I, I, lo- I love the bottle version. It's, anyway. it's, it's a beer that I tend to, I find it a little bit sweet and malty for my palate. So it's not one that I'll go for. I tried it on keg and I was like, why don't we get this in the UK? And th- their response was, because there's no market, yeah. because they love the cask and the bottle version. Which I, I'm a big fan of both of those, so yeah. I'll say the same. But the Eureka, again, you know, this is coming in at 4.9%, so it's under the 5%. I think we had a few a few tastings of this while we were we there, had a, we? we? had a good few tastings of this. I mean, and um, it's I'm translated, quite, it's yeah, translated it's, um, quite well to the bottle, hasn't it? It is. It's There's a lovely, almost... It's almost like an orange, almost like an orange Jaffa cake aroma yeah. coming off of it, and it's it, it's light, but it's got a lovely malty backbone to it. it definitely got the malty backbone. It's uh, you know mar- marisotta barley's with the crystal rye malt. Interestingly, for a you know what we believe they're trying to appeal to a slightly different market to their their standards, it's still a bottle conditioned bottle, and it's a. 500 mil bottle bottle, which for the purposes of what we're doing now is is very welcome yeah I was surprised to find it was bottle conditioned doesn't add to the flavour if anything I mean it doesn't it doesn't take anything away it's you know it's there's a lot going on there in terms of the flavours coming through that beer yeah I mean I I said I enjoyed it on keg and I'm enjoying it equally on bottle actually but I'm surprised they brought that one out in the 500 yeah rather than the craftier bottles that we've tried so Previously. very welcome, but I just don't know whether they've missed a trick by not doing that in the three hundred and thirties as well. Well, because I mean, let's be honest, you look at it and that sits right alongside proper job, doesn't it? And and everything yeah. else in St. Austin. Yeah, range. I suppose you could do tribute that, then proper yeah. job, then black, black proper, proper black, that proper was it. black, yeah. And then you could, then you've got quite that's quite a good run. Yeah, yeah. 
But Sorry, I'm thinking about doing that run there. No, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's perfect for, as I say, towards the end of our session here where we've, we've had a couple of different beers and now we've gone to something more traditional that will, will hopefully help us to bring... Bring the show to a close. Tonight's show in. We're uh, still got a few bits to go. We have. Though. We have. But we're getting there. We, we are getting there. Hold so, on. Um, hold on. Hold on. Let's get into some of this. Let us know. Write it down. Let us know. Write it down. Let us know your thoughts and bitter in lingerness. Write it down. So we had some feedback from, from last week's show uh, where we were talking about the, the, the local scene. So um, drink, drank, drunk, John at Drink Drank Blog. He does that just so you have to read it I, out. I got it. I got it this week yeah. though, without any stuttering. Uh, totally agree with what counts as local. Depends on where you live. In London, we have so many, I think a five mile radius should apply. For me, up in Enfield, that would also include Beavertown Redemption and Enfield. Uh, also includes, soon to include, Camden Town. But I don't think a brewery owned by an international company and named after another part of London could be considered as local. So that's that, that different spin on it. Different spin on the, it. The the Enfield Porter was that the beer we tried at the um, Our House recently? I think we might have tried that. Yeah, really that was nice. I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Katsuel, um at Katrina's did a quick Google after listening to the show. There are fifteen breweries within a two mile radius of my house. I live in the brewery minefield. You see, I I saw that comment for Katrina and we we we're, we're we're both in Essex. I'm North Essex. You're sort of mid Essex. Um, and I spend a lot of time in South Essex and Essex has around about 30 breweries if I remember correctly yeah but it, it doesn't matter that there's 30 breweries there's a lot of them I can't be no. bothered with and I wouldn't go out of my way to try them so you know if Kat's in an area where she's got 15 breweries which she's really happy about then she's doing really well I'm not that close to 15 breweries I'm that bothered about <laughs> me either um, the, the, the other point that we asked people to feedback on was we had a discussion last week about uh, Carlsberg possibly looking to buy a UK craft brewery so we were asking for thoughts on who that might be oh yeah um, so Lee Lee Carlon uh, at Lee Carlon said it, could it be Wylam Brewery and I think uh, someone said I'd like to hear Dave's response to I, that. I'd like to hear his response uh, Beer Nouveau said, at Beer Nouveau said there's also that squirrel one so this is is it red squirrel red squirrel because they, re squirrel? Cause they, they, they rebranded from mad to red or red to mad red didn't to they mad. and now look like a clone uh, of the Scottish brewery and they did a bit of a crowd fun for that yeah, as well didn't they yeah um, this was an interesting one at Cowboy Drinks Craft I think Thornbridge Buxton Siren or Red Church to which I instantly went never for, for three of those at so least so the one you would say maybe would be Red Church then yeah if, well they've just moved to a new shiny big brewery in Harlow so they're not even in London anymore um, who knows uh, Ollie Clark at Various Ollie uh, agreed with me uh, saying he can see it being four pure Simon Clark at Simon Carbon agreed with Ruth last week who said purity uh, but surely they're a little bit too traditional who knows it depends on what what you want to do with it you're looking it. for uh, Mark at Million Bevs uh, said Redwell or Wild Beer and I think we commented on Wild Beer last we week think we, we, we were unlikely to timing at yeah. the moment as well and then uh, Paul at UNRCD at Cowboy Drinks Craft and again Mark at Million Bevs all said Vocation which seemed to be one of our favourites last week that was definitely a favourite wasn't it although there was a comment from a Vocation employee in the last week that said I don't see it being Vocation Oh, okay. So, um, but wouldn't comment further on social media. Understandable. But that was probably the same with that Camden employee when he blocked, when he tweeted saying, I've just effing found out, but yeah, been sold. Probably. Um, and then the last thing uh, in our, our Bitter and Lingonist letters section this week isn't so much a letter, it's uh, more of an opportunity for us maybe to vent a, a, a little bit of a rage that's, that, that, that's been building up. So, um, once again this week, uh, we, we've seen the rise of the, the untapped debate, argument, frustration. Yeah, purely relating to pushing your untapped yeah. check-ins to Twitter. Yeah. So there was a tweet from uh, Nate Dog Twenty Seven. Um, so, so, so Nate Southwood um, up in Norfolk, uh, who said, "Due to popular demand, I will stop." posting untapped check-ins on Twitter, even though I post what I'm drinking to engage in conversation. 
all hell broke loose. It's probably fair to say. Yeah, I think I joined in on my point. I, I joined in as as well. Um, I, I, and I think the comment that I made was, it's got to the point where there are almost as many people moaning about people pushing their check-ins to untapped as there are check-ins as there are check-ins to untapped and it, it, and it's like it, it's almost like untapped is eating itself because it's like for, for god's sake I'm, I'm fed up seeing people moaning about people pushing their check-ins to untapped it's if that's what people want to do that's their choice and isn't that what social media is about it's never bothered me um i think the one comment which i think we had when we did the untapped show with being omicron is that the way it pushes it through to Twitter, and this is saying for which I'd love Untapped to sort out, is that it doesn't give you the whole comment. Yeah, that's that. That's the problem. That it gives you if you if you are concise at the start of your comment on Untapped, then that will come out on on Facebook. But if you do what I do sometimes, go football beer, train beer, that bit comes up, and then what I actually think about the beer, you lose half. Yeah. Of it. Then you have to go to the Untapped check-in and sign in. Um, but for me, I I, I I I don't mind seeing it. I mean, if it's uh, if someone's just tweeting Budweiser's all the time, when I just move the screen down, and every so often I see a beer come up, uh, but might be by someone I'm a bit like my mate Carl picked up some good beers at a local bottle shop in Colchester, two brews, and said, uh, and started checking in a very crafty selection on Saturday night. And I'm thinking, oh, well done. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm liking what you're, you're, you've been having here. And I actually, I did then engage with him and say, well, what did you think of it? I think it was the juice box. He said, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I said, did you know they do a double one? He said, oh, I bet that's nice. And we yeah. were going back, even though we were mates outside of the beer thing, it was purely a beer-related conversation online because of his untapped checking being pushed through to Twitter. So I was, I've, I've got no problem with it. But it's, it's kind of, and that's the key point, and, and I've, I've underlined this. You've in, underlined in, it three in, times. In, in Nate's tweet was that it's about engaging in conversation. So, so for me, I will push beers through to Twitter. So the beers we've drunk tonight for the show... For, for me, this is about promo for the show. Yeah. So I will push through to Twitter. It's a show beer. If you want to listen to our thoughts, you need to tune in when the show's released. When I'm drinking normally, it's about me engaging with others. So here's a beer I'm drinking. This is what I thought of it. What do you think of it? Yeah. And, and trying to get people to engage with it that way. Yeah, especially if it's a beer, you know, that maybe is slightly unusual or one I haven't had for a long time, or one that I think has just changed completely, I'll push that through. Yeah. I don't, if I'm having my multiple pints of ghost ship or landlord, probably won't, because people know what I think about it already. Yeah. There's probably not much of a conversation to have with that one, but I, um, while we were recording tonight, I put through our pre-recording beer tribute, and someone commented on that, and saying that's my favourite regional cast beer. It's a conversation starter. Yeah. For, for, for me, it's a conversation starter. And like, and like I say, I am literally at the point now where I'm like, there, there, there are almost more people moaning about it than there are pushes coming through. But it's, it's like everything else. I mean, you know, we're in an election cycle now. So I've got half of my Twitter feed is about the election. Oh, yeah. And I'm on a... Uh, I'm, I'm on a Twitter purge at the moment of muting people that retweet elections. But again, I'll, I'll do the opposite. I'll just swipe through it. Because every now and again, something does pop up which interests yeah. me. But that's the great thing about the internet, isn't it? If you don't like something, just ignore it. Yeah. And, a bit and, like and the old days when people used to moan about what you saw on TV. Yeah. Turn it off or change the channel. Ab absolutely. I mean, there was one other comment on this, and this was from a brewer um, that, that said, from a brewery point of view, this was Chris Clough at, at Nine Squirrels Brewery, who said, from a brewery point of view, sometimes we only find out where our beers are via untapped check-ins. So actually, it is a useful tool. So um, you, you know what, people... If you don't like what people are doing on social media, ignore it. Don't put, don't become part of the problem by yeah. commenting on it. Otherwise, you're only going to add to it. Yeah, you? yeah. Um, okay, so and that's um, that's so that's our bittering lingerness, which is kind of our letters. Not quite comments. Oh, have you got another one? Not mo more than moan, but I haven't done this for a while. A couple of blog shoutouts. Ah, oh, is this because is this because Mark moaned that we weren't doing blog shows? Anymore? No, no. Just um, I actually did a bit of a catch up on reading okay. some blogs at the weekend, so it's purely down to me. Um, so I, I of course, I'm going to make note of these now, aren't I? Yeah, but it's all right. We can, you, you, you'll not, you'll be familiar with them anyway. Um, there was one from um, a, a, both blogs. I'm going to quote a, quote are from serial people okay. I've serialised before. Um, so we've got Pete McKerry. Uh, a recent blog of his uh, was Let Them Drink Crappy Stout. 
which was uh, based on his overhearing in a, a conversation when he was in a par- bar in London. Oh, I read this one. Uh, where the barman was very disparaging about yeah. what people's choices were if it didn't really agree with his version of the modern craft beer scene. Um, I was I was right with Pete on his indignation about this. Uh, we all have differing views about what people should or shouldn't drink these days. And, you know, I, 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 I will... Honestly, say when I walk down the hill on recycling day and I see a whole load of bud in a, in a recycling, I go, what are you thinking? But to actually be as vocal and as disparaging in tone as Pete said this guy was, completely wrong. In a paid position yes, as, as well. that's slightly different as well. Yeah. This is a guy who's actually been paid to do a job yeah. as well. Um, and then also a shout out for Mark Johnson. Um, he had his third part, his third blog about um, mental health and how beer blogging has helped him. Um, it's a very strong piece. Um, I retweeted it yesterday with the phrase, do not let yourself be distracted by anything else when you read this. Give it your full attention. Um, it's very open, it's very honest, it's very raw. Um, you don't necessarily need to read part one and two to give it the context, but it would help. Um, so both of those will have links in the show notes. Absolutely. Um, and apologies, I haven't given many blog shout outs, but I, I got a bit behind on reading everyone's blogs, so sorry about that. Could you all stop writing for a bit? <laughs> okay, so um, we're almost done with the Eureka. Um, well, literally. Yeah. What? Um, any final thoughts? I think this is really nice. We touched upon it last week with Ruth about traditional brewers doing craft, and me and Ruth had a bit of back and forth about a couple of breweries, and I've always said, and I think you've said the same, Adnams is our sort of a example there are pedestal regional brewer who do craft well haven't thought about buying someone else to do it they've just started to do it themselves yeah. um i don't think this quite hits the heights of say the uh, ease up ipa or the mosaic you know that kind of thing from Adam. But it's very close it's very close to that this is a really nice example of an american pale ale but done quite traditionally by a, a regional brewer very drinkable as we've shown because we've both almost finished we, this we are I'm, I'm finding it as it's warming in the glass and as I'm getting to the bottom I'm finding it maybe it's beginning to err a little bit on the traditional side yeah and that's why I think that say the Adams Mosaic doesn't yeah if you have um, a 500 bottle of that even when it starts to warm up you can, the, you can still it. that yeah. clean very modern way of doing it but this is not a million miles away from cracking it and on no. keg, I never felt that. I never felt that. On keg, it was completely drinkable. We did also drink it quite quickly. Yes, we were quite thirsty on that morning, I remember. Um, so, uh, where's the great big box of nothing going this week? Okay, well, we had uh, there was two runners. Uh, the first one was from uh, Fork and Carrot. He had a picture of a 2012 Bourbon County Stout. Oh, yeah, um, it was a birthday on anniversary. Yeah, it was a, a, he said a very generous friend bought it as a wedding present, and he'd obviously just cracked it open. Now I've never even seen a picture or a bottle of a twenty twelve no. Bourbon County Stout, um, and I thought, oh, almost just for having the bottle of Bourbon <laughs> County Stout from twenty twelve. <laughs> However, last week's winner, who made a bit of a comeback after not being around for long has decided to dive in and got the two weeks running. No way. Yeah. With a um, streak. His picture, very picturesque. Again, it'll be, it'll be uh, shared over all forms of social media tomorrow. Um, a bottle of Season of Saison, the 2017 version. Um, it's in a field. Um, I think it's a bit of moonlight behind it. The Was moonlight's this... reflecting. Oh, the great picture. Yeah, he nailed it. So with, with the comment that he literally ran out of his house uh, yeah. it, to, with a bottle to get that snack. Yeah. Amazing picture. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. picture. And it just happens to have a beer in it almost. Um, but it works. So yes, Falk and Carrot, you were so close with your 2012 Bourbon County Stout. Just purely until because that point. I wanted to have some of that 2012 bourbon can of out and it was well, yeah. it, it looked so good in the glass as well. But son of a gun, having been away for a while, he's got his mojo back, and and that now no pressure puts us in that position where we might get our first ever hat trick again as as as, yeah. as well. And yeah. there's been a few people have been close to it, but no one's got it's it. Never happened. 
Um, okay, so if you want to get involved in either the prize, this prize, or Bitter and Lingness, um, if, if it's for Bitter and Lingness, use the hashtag opinions. We'll find it, we'll include you in, in next, next week's chat. If, anything you want to talk about, rant about, ask us about. Hashtag opinions. Hashtag opinions. Uh, if you want to go for the prize, this prize, it's on Instagram only, and the hashtag is cheers, guys. Yeah. That's, that's what we're looking for up on Instagram. Um, so before we talk about next week, one thing I need to just mention to all of our listeners is we're running um, an audience survey, which will enable us to understand a little bit more about your listener preferences. Uh, there's going to be a link in the show notes for the next couple of couple of months, actually, um, because we, we, we have to run it for a couple of months to get a real idea of our audience makeup. Um, the the survey is going to take you about 10 minutes to complete. There's 40 questions. About half of the questions are very much demographic, which are more about the the, the site that run the survey rather than, than our listener preferences, but it's the only way we can collect the information. So really urging our listeners to, to click on that link in our uh, show notes and just go through and complete the audience survey would really appreciate it. But I think uh, not all of them are mandatory, are they? They're not. So they're, if you're uncomfortable with any of the answers, yeah, they're, skip. They're, they're not all mandatory. I mean, there's a lot of household questions in there, but th this is purely about us using... It, it's essentially the tracking service that we use to... Um, get our statistics in terms of who's listening it get, just gives us a profile of our audience which means we can um, tailor the content to, to more fit what you want to listen to so yeah and, so, and so we just like and we also just like stats absolutely love love stats that's the so, thing again so please make sure you, you you complete that survey we're going to bang on about this for the for the next few shows anyway so and another thing if other people want to answer those frequently asked beer questions we'd love to see your answers as well yeah so although we've nominated podcasts to do it, any listeners, yep. we'd love to see your answers. If we get some really good ones, we'll read them out. Yep, just uh, again, use the hashtag opinions for that and, uh, and we'll pick up your, your responses to that. Um, so what is coming up next week? Despite our best efforts, it's been another <laughs> mammoth show this week. Um, <laughs> I just think we're going to get to. We've got to get to a point where actually standard opinion shows an hour and a half, an hour and a half long. That that's that's what it is. We're there. Um, what what's coming up next week? Well, we're, we're recording very soon our opinions on film. We are. That's uh, we're recording that this weekend, but yeah. you won't hear you that won't hear that till the week after. Week after, yeah. but that's coming up very soon for us. So yeah, and probably fair to say at this point, if you want to get involved in that. You need to get that box of beers from Hippo Beers. Get the Behemoth box for May. Um, it's only going to be available until the end of May. The show won't go out until the first Thursday in June. So there'll be a link in the show notes to that box if you want to get involved in the opinions and film and us drinking eight beers while watching Back to the Future. Yeah, very excited about this. Oh, yeah. Saturday afternoons won't be the same. <laughs> Never again. And um, and next week and next week the the regular show we're recording with River and Brews. We we are and we're going to be at uh, our London studio. Our uh, London studio. Brew Dog Shoreditch. Uh, so so we'll be having some beers and we'll be chatting to to the guys from River and Brews about things that make beer better. Exactly. Absolutely, um, mate. We've got no beer left. We've got no do, beer left. To do the, the, the cheers thing. So with an empty glass. Yeah. Cheers. cheers. Strangers to the toilet Are the first ones free